Hello, welcome back to the PLSQL tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial, we are going to discuss about a new data type. So, let's try to see what we have done so far. We declare a variable, say x number, and in begin, we assign a value to x. Okay, so this is simply what we are trying to do. We are trying to create a variable x which can store a scalar variable in this case this is a number type all right but a lot of cases a lot of practical cases it requires that we need to store a values like 5 10 15 20 so on so what does it mean that we have to store a collection of elements okay so this individual call elements so in programming language a data structure that supports that stores this kind of element is called array okay in plsql we have an array support and that array is called v array okay or called variable array okay so what we have done here, so here is the bigger picture that PLSQL data type are two types like scalar, like you know, it's a number, date, varchar, and all this thing. Then we have composite data type. In composite data type, we can have a records type, which we have discussed in the previous videos. And we PLSQL support this kind of you know manipulation by three different avenues. And those are called collections, PLSQL collection. In this collection, we are going to focus mostly on V array. Okay. So in this collection, we will we'll understand what is V array and how it helps us in dealing with this kind of problem where we need to store multiple elements. So let's take an example here first thing is that we need to define VRA as a user defined data type that means unlike number varchar where PLSQL gives you some some data type predefined data type in contrary we have to define a type ABC is a VRA this is a syntax is VRA of 10 that means here we are saying that the maximum size of this of this array is 10 and then it will contain what it will contain number elements then at line number 4 what we define we declare a variable v2 of type abc so that means at line number 4 we have a variable v2 but this variable v2 is just defined it's just a declare it's not assigned or anything is happening so therefore it is going to point to null then at line number 7 we are trying to assign value 78 to the first element but since v2 is pointing to null this line number 7 is going to give him an exception given error that you are referencing to a uninitialized v array or uninitialized collection so that means this is you know whatever I'm showing you this is a wrong code okay to so basically what I need to do I need to initialize then I can assign so to initialize what you need to do we need to call in line number seven so here you know that the same code I have written but I have I've written two more lines of code so what we have shown here we are saying v2 is equal to abc you know, the function abc so what you are trying to do here this abc is called the constructor okay so what is what is must be done that this variable should be initialized with the help of a system defined function called constructs constructor the constructor has the same name as the 
VRA type. Since the VRA type is ABC, therefore the constructor name is ABC. Okay. So now at the line number seven, what, when I when I have done this thing, then what happens is that instead of pointing to to null, it's now pointing to a area where we can store something. Then what we what I have done in line number eight, we extend. So that means basically here we create one place where we can store something. So at line number eight, we extend this thing. So that means we know we we, we have a place where we can we can put something. So that is you can think about the like extend is going to allocate. Actually, is going to allocate a place where you can put the value. So V to one seventy eight. That means seventy eight is stored here, and this is the subscript. This index is one. And next, if I want to allocate another, if we want to assign another element, then again I need to do V two dot extend. When we do v2 that extend, I'll put another value. Let's say I put 23 and so on. Similarly, I can go up to 10 because my size is 10. I cannot go more than 10. Okay. So this is how we are going to assign a value to the VRA, or this is the way that you initialize. Okay. So the summarization is that initially whenever you don't do anything it's just pointing to null and the moment you call the constructor a place is allocated and by 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 calling this extend you actually going to create a space so that you can put a number and then in line number 9 we assign the same thing also can be done by another way in this example what we have done in line number 3 we have created a variable v1 and then we are calling the constructor with bunch of values okay so what is happening here at line number 7 essentially is this so v1 is now pointing to 1 2 3 4 5 6 and then there's some spaces there empty spaces there okay so up to 10 and then if I do dms output put line v11 the value is 1 right so this is way how you initialize let's take some more example so here I'm just basically doing a little bit more so like you know abc is this thing and then v2 is abc so therefore so v2 here is pointing to null okay and then in line number 8 I initialize so that means you know v2 is no more pointing to null it's pointing to it's pointing to some place where we can put some elements okay then what I have what I have done here in line number 9 to line number 13 I extend and I inside the for loop I extend v2 and then allocate 1 to 10 1 to up to 10 okay so basically by, by using this code I populate I also give another example where I have V underscore EMP so V underscore EMP so what V underscore EMP is doing I'm executing um, a cursor for loop and inside that cursor for loop I'm keep extending and then whatever the value of employee number I'm getting from the database I'm populating the V underscore EMP VRA and as you know that I cannot go more than 10 elements so therefore I just make sure that my query is going to fetch less than 10 so in this case I'll get 9 elements so therefore I'll get 9 employee number into the VRA called V underscore EMP let's say it start from 7839 7840 and so on up to 9th and then one thing is remain empty alright so this is what what the, the example of what I showed you in the first example I populate using a for loop in second example I'm getting from the database and using a cursor for loop I'm populating the v underscore EMP VRA okay so next thing what I'm showing is that okay so we define this collection v1 or v2 or whatever right and then so we define and initialize and all this thing so 
how do I manipulate this VRA? Okay, so basically what happens in order to manipulate this VRA, Oracle provides you a lot of predefined built-in functions. Okay, built-in. So basically, Oracle gives you built-in functions and procedures. Okay, to operates this collections operates this VRS okay so basically this is called collection methods okay so collection methods are useful to manage the collection there are different types of method so let's basically go an overview the first one is count count or limit. So let's take an example. How far? Say for example, in this case, I have v2 is 1 to 10. So if I do something like this, say v2 dot v2 dot count, it will give me the number of elements in that array in that VRA. So in this case, it will give me 10. Say for example, if I have, if I have a VRA I, I create another VRA say V3 and V3 I just kept 1 and 2 only 2 values are there then in this case V2 dot count will give me 2 another variable is there called another method is there called limit V2 dot limit will give me the maximum size of this VRA in this case it will be 10 okay. so count and limit so count is going to give me the size the a number of elements in that VRA and limit will give me the maximum size then another variable another method called exist and it will take a parameter called n so exist n will return true if nth element is available on that VRA that means if I have a VRA V2 and then I have just only 1 2 and 3 and if I do V2 dot exist one that means if this element is exist in this case which it is because you know the nth element the first element is existing because we have a value of one then this is going to return me true if however i give v2 dot exist nine since there number no number ninth element exists here in v2 therefore v2 dot exist nine will give me false then two more methods called fast and last first give me the index of the first element of the VRA so in this case it will always v2 dot first will always give me one so any VRA dot first will give you one whereas v2 dot last will give me the last element where we have a value in this case we have three then two more values called prior next that means if I do v2 dot prior 2 that means the value will be 3 so basically next element next index sorry sorry v2 dot prior 2 will give me 1 the previous index before 2 so whatever you give before the previous of 2 Whereas if I do V2 prior 1, it will give me null because before 1 there is no more. Similarly, V2 dot next 1 will give me 2 because you know next next index is 2 and then V2 dot next of 3 will give me null because there is no more after null uh, after 3. So you use basically prior prior and next to manip to traverse the loop traverse the VRA. We'll give an example pretty soon. Then another called extend trim. So extend we have already seen. So by extend means like you know what I'm going to do, I'm going to extend the VRA to basically you know to, to initially just like this. 
So whenever I do extend, basically I create I create a space so that I can allocate a number there. Then trim is the opposite of extend. So in this case, if I do v2 dot trim three, that means I deleted a third element. Okay. So after v2 dot three, v2 dot trim three, if I do v2 dot count, the value will be two because just have only two elements. Okay. So trim is going to trim. If I do v2 dot trim, sorry. If you do v2 to trim three, then it will delete three elements from the from the end. That means if I do v2 to trim three, then all these things are gone. But however, if I just give v2 to trim one, then it's just going to delete last element. So that in that case, just only three will be gone. Okay. So this is called collection methods. By using collection methods, we basically manipulate the VRA, and here is an example how we are going to manipulate the VRA. Let's say we have an array of ABC. The VRA name is ABC, and the VRA is of maximum size of ten elements, and it can store number. And then, you know, this V1 I declare a variable, and that the variable I initialize with values like one, two, three, four, five. Six, and then I have couple of elements which is left empty. Then, so here is I am going to use the collection method. I want to do v one dot count. So in this case, v one dot count will give me six because I just have only six elements in this thing. But v one dot limit will give me ten because the maximum size of this array is ten. So instead of you know if if I started with twenty. Then VRA should have given me limit should have given me twenty, okay. So but that is not the case. We are not. We just going to give ten, okay. V1 dot first will give me one because the first element is one. V1 dot last will give me six. The last index is six here. Then what I did here, I trim the last two elements. So line number ten essentially remove six and five. After that, what I am doing, using the first and last method, I am I can traverse the array, the V array, using a for loop. So I create a for loop counter, and then what from where do I start? I start with V1 dot first. So V1 dot first will give me the index of the first element. Index of the first element is one. It's always one, and index of the last element is four. So basically, I'm going to go from i is equal to one to four. Then I'm going to print the values of v1, one, v1, two, v1, three, v1, four. Then, if I do v1 dot last, or whatever writing line number fourteen, so v1 dot last will give me this will give me the four. So essentially, this is how you are going to manipulate a VRA by using. The collection methods. Collection methods are very powerful, and you will use them creatively to solve lot of of your problems.